So welcome to this Abana sponsored event. I want to thank Darren Nelson for allowing Abana the opportunity to feature this topic. This is what we're going to try and achieve. Uh, there's a level of detail here that requires you to have uh, a decent bit of bar. I'm going to be working on inch and a half square stock. And I would say that you can get this level of detail down to about inch and a quarter. If you went down to one inch, you might be a little tight for room. Um, I've never done it on one inch, but I've got a feeling that it's just going to be a little tight. So the inch and a quarter certainly would move a little easier than the inch and a half, but the inch and a half gives me the opportunity to um, expand a little bit and show you what I'm doing. I'm using about a 12 inch long piece um, and I'm looking for something that can be held in the vise easily and rest on the vise pin to stop it from pivoting in the vise jaws. And then onto that, I've got a welded handle. You could use a pair of tongs if you uh, had them available. I don't care to grip a pair of tongs for the length of time that it takes to, to make these things. So that's just a piece of half inch round uh, welded to the back. And that makes uh, enough of a handle for me to be able to carry on and work. The basic shape is all important. If the basic shape is wrong, you're never going to get the bear's head. If it's too short or too long, you're going to end up with something that's completely uh, different to the bear's head. And I have made more than one or two little piglets uh, trying to get this thing right. So um, it's all about the proportions first. And the first thing that you've got to know is that most of the proportions come from the stock size that you are using. And again, in my case, I'm using an inch and a half square stock. What I want to do first is I'm going to make a blunt taper to the end. And you can see here that I've just got this one to one to the height. So whatever is your um, stock, in this case, one and a half, I want that taper to the end to be about one and a half, the same as the bar is thick. The nose, I want you to be about two thirds of the height. So if it's one and a half bar stock, that nose is going to be about an inch. And, you know, heavy on the about. Don't, don't be there with a, a rule trying to measure these things. If it looks right, it is right. And then the width is going to be a third height, or it's going to be half an inch. I would probably pad that a little bit, take it out to 9 16th, uh, not quite 5 8. 5 8, you've got too much left in reserve, and you're going to get a surprise later on. When, you, uh, when you're drawing this, we know from uh, blacksmithing, there's a couple of ways to make a taper. We can either squeeze the end out, or we can pull everything that's not part of the taper back out of the way. And you can see in the top left there that I'm actually pulling the material back, almost like an upsetting blow. And I find that this is important with this animal head, because this is starting to place material further back in the bar that I can capitalize on later for making the rough that goes around the back of the neck and for the ears. Um, so I like this way of doing business. On a practical point, if I just try to draw a taper with this large of a bar using a hand hammer, I'm probably going to get fish lips on the end. So getting rid of the corners by pulling them back goes a long way to stopping those fish lips from developing. You'll notice when I'm working on the top of the bar, and this is the top left photograph, that I have the bar uh, flat on the anvil, and I'm working on the sides, making the cheeks of the bear's head. I've got the bar off, and I'm holding it at a slight angle. So when you work on the top, you go down. When you work on the sides, lift it up. And the bottom, you're going to hold flat on the anvil, except when you're dressing the um, the sort of the the deshaped uh, piece on the bottom, I want you to come along and forge the bottom. Let me just change to a laser here. There we go. I want you to come along and forge this bottom section. And I want you to start to think about pushing the bottom of the jaw out past what will be the nose. And in real life, is that what happens? No. Uh, a bear has a very strong nose and the nose is forward of the mouth. But in forging of the mouth, when we cut that jaw, there is going to be some upsetting action taking place. So if you start level with or even behind the nose now, before you start cutting the jaw, it's really going to get uh, pushed back and it's going to look wrong. 
So before you go too far, I want you to spread out that lower section by working on the bottom of the bar, chilling the top of the bar on the anvil face and just push the bottom jaw out past the nose. Let's have a look at this and see what that looks like when you're actually doing it hot. You can see I'm pulling back the material. I'm not trying to draw a taper. I'm just getting that top corner out of the way and I'm holding it flat on the anvil. Pressing a little bit. And just getting the corner out of the way. Sooner or later, I'm gonna start lifting up on that as I develop that cheek. Here we go, now I'm lifting up. If you have the ability to lower your anvil so you can get more of a swipe onto this thing, you're going to enjoy that. Or go around to your neighbors and work on a, a lower anvil. Um, but <clears throat> having a lower anvil goes a long way. And that was me tamping the end, getting rid of any lipping or cupping because I'm working on too big a stock. Remember the four factors that affect the penetration of your hammer blow into a piece of steel. How hard are you hitting? How hot is the material? What is the nature of the material, et cetera, and the size. And this is a big bar. Take your time. There is no rush with this. Again, if the pre-shape is wrong, the head is going to be wrong. So make the pre-shape right. So I'm not quite there yet. I've got a little bit more work to do. Inch tall, half an inch or so wide, looks like five eighth there. And I'm knocking this back. Notice when I'm upsetting, I'm holding it back at an angle and I'm bouncing it on its nose just to drive that nose back to make sure the bottom jaw is proud of the nose at this stage. And there we go. If your proportions are off now, <clears throat> it's not going to get any better if you go on. So fix any proportion problems now. And I don't care if that means going to uh, your belt sander and grinding the nose off a little bit or cutting it off with a hot cut, whatever it is, but make it right. If you've drawn it out too long and weedy, you're going to make more of a wolf than you're going to make a, um, a bear's head. And if it's too short, it's going to look like a bat or a little piglet rather than a bear's head. So the first thing we're going to do is set the brow. Now, bear in mind that the uh, piece in the, the forefront here looks shorter than the piece at the back, but don't forget I've drawn out the snout at the back and I've yet to do this in the forefront. All I'm doing now is setting the brow and I'm going to come down about two thirds along that taper. So you can see my taper is an uh, inch and a half, we said, the same as the thickness of the stock. So I've got about an inch laid off on the offside, oh, sorry, on the near side edge, and I'm working off a nice, generous radius edge. I don't want a sharp edge. I start flat so I can set the shoulder, but as soon as I've set the shoulder and I can, I want to lift up just slightly and I want to start to create that taper to the bridge of his nose down to the snout. And then you'll see on the bottom photograph, I'm just dressing any growth in width as it occurs. The next job is going to be to refine that snout and prepare the forging uh, or the stock for forging the beard later on. So let's have a look at what we're going to do. We're gonna come in here and I want to make this um, 45 degrees. And then we're gonna make this half round on the top but I want to keep it to 45 degrees on the bottom. So once I go to uh, from the octagon and start to make this round, you'll notice I'm gonna hold this flat on the anvil and I'm gonna change the angle of my hammer as I start to knock in those lines. I need those 45s on the bottom. And if you look at this bottom right photograph, I want to be able to get my fuller in there. And if it's uh, round on the bottom there, my fuller just runs the risk anyway of skipping off. So let's have a look at uh, isolating the material for the snout. There's a couple of ways you can do this. I'm using a Z bar from basically your level one. If you're following along with the national curriculum, uh, this is a three eighth uh, Z bar and a three eighth 
top fuller, handheld top fuller. You'll notice I'm holding it at a slight angle. I'm not holding it at 90 degrees to the bar. I want to get the cheeks coming back slightly towards the, the bear's jaw. And I'm just going to fuller in until I'm about level with the snout. So I'm going to fuller in here until I get down to that 916 thickness or so. And here it is. I've just followed in. You can see I'm just a little wider maybe than the tip of the nose. Uh, and I'm going to start to dress this and then get rid of this excess material. You can do all of this without the tooling. You can mash it uh, down on the edge of the anvil if you're fairly confident with your hammer blows. Um, even errant blows, and you can see I've had a few errant blows on here, they all uh, they all read. It all seems to add to the texture of the bear. So just because you miss once or twice, uh, nobody's going to cry about that. I think it actually helps to the, the look of the bear. So uh, my preference, unless I'm doing a demo, is to just do this on the side of the anvil. Uh, if I'm doing a demo, demo, I like it to look a little crisper. Um, I want to try and look like I know what I'm doing. Um, but uh, errant blows, like I say, they don't really hurt. And then I'm going to come along and I'm going to start to forge in my 45 degrees. Now I'm not going to hold this brow on the anvil. I'm going to keep the stock limited to the snout, but I am going to move my hammer further back as shown by that bottom right photograph. So I want to create a 45 degrees here and I want to create a 45 degrees on the snout. And then I'm going to dress the sides so that everything is nice and smooth. I want to retain that bottom 45 degrees, but I want to round the top edge of the snout. You can round it with your hammer, you can round it with your um, rasp, you can go to the belt sander, we don't really care. Just so long as you round that top edge, but retain that bottom 45 degrees, so it will take your fuller as you go in to make the beard. So now let's have a look at the underside of the jaw, which is going to become this bear's beard. Uh, and this 45 degrees uh, or whatever we got is going to go a long way to make that easier. So this is what we're going to try and do. We're going to rest the fuller on here and we're going to shape this later on into making the beard. Note that the bottom of the jaw is still proud of the nose at this stage because we've not cut for the jaw or set in the teeth or the tongue. So make that uh, proud of the nose at this stage. Note that the cheeks are sloping back towards the lower jawline from the top of the snout. We've got a nice strong brow and we've got plenty of upset material here to make the ruff and the bear's ears. I'm gonna leave that sitting there just for a moment while you have a look at that. Uh, don't worry about the straight line. We've got a fuller, we can take care of those lines, we can make those go away. And all of this material is gonna get chewed up when we make the forehead and the two ears. So um, we've got, these are the, the tools that we're going to use for our bear's head. Uh, and I'm going to use this fuller. This fuller is about 5 16th. This one is just a standard half round at 5 16th. You could also make it uh, with a little bit of a draft on the back, which would push down for the cheek. But this is the tool that I'm going to use. We are going to move to the vise at this stage so we can start to put in the facial features. And I'm going to landmark the most of the, the important features by the eye socket here. So you'll notice that the socket is 50-50 um, over the bridge of the nose. So I want you to come in, level with the bridge of the nose with the middle of the tool and then drive the tool in. We are going to start from the back of the head and work towards the front uh, with most of the delicate features such as the nostrils and teeth, et cetera, being some of the latter part of the work we do. The last thing we're going to do is put in the, the eyes because if we put those in too soon, they'll scale up and we won't be able to read them. So here's our first move. We're going to start to put in the eye sockets and we're going to run that back to start to make the define the top end edge of his cheeks and the back of the cheek, start of the neck and the beard. And again, as we said before, I want you to place that tool, the middle of the tool in line with the bridge of the nose. 
The eye sockets are deepest at the front and feather out as they go to the back. And I want you to run them all the way behind the upset. And then we're going to come in um, behind the upset and create the beard. A bear has massive cheek muscles. So don't be wimpy on uh, this cheek area. Leave a good, strong amount of material there uh, to give it this big, meaty uh, jaw. Again, that's where I want to come out to. Here's the edge of my upset. So we're going to follow all the way down here. This bit goes away as we start to make the, uh, the beard and the neck rough. For the neck rough, I want you to start with your follow at about 90 degrees to the stock, and you're going to run your follow down all the way, and then 90 degrees to the 45 degree angle that you got on the bottom. Uh, and I just want you to go in there and make a trough. Once you've made the trough, then we can come back and now you can start to angle your uh, fuller back a little bit and you can start to push the material back into the neck or the lower throat. And that's going to start making the rough. So the first thing you're going to do is just create the channel by coming square to the stock as you see it. Um, so as you come along again on that 45 degrees, I want you to hold it uh, perpendicular to the 45 degrees. And then you'll notice as I come around the corners, I am trying to leave some uh, hatch marks there from the fuller. Again, I'm just trying to denote a little bit of feathering or uh, the fur, um, same on his cheek. And I've come along with my fuller and I've just bounced the fuller on and off that. Uh, again, at a black heat, doesn't have to be a black heat. And I'm just trying to give this a little bit of texture and get rid of the sharp line that you can see here on the, the bottom of the jaw that existed on the cheek. All I've done is try to blend that in uh, and give myself just a little bit more texture than I ordinarily would have had. Let's have a look at a couple more photographs of the same sort of thing. What I would like for you to do is we are going to come along at 45 degrees up to the middle of the, uh, the jaw here and then same on the other side. And then I want you to gather that material right at the tip of the jaw and I want you to push it back and we're going to start to make his little goatee. You can see this perhaps best on the bottom photograph. So it's a two part process. We're just going to come in here and create both uh, gullies. And then once we've got the gullies established, I want you to drop your fuller right in here and start to push back that material to make the goatee. So let's see if we can show this hot. You can see I'm digging in with the edge of the tool to create the deepest part of the eye socket right there by the edge of the nose. So I'm not just holding it flat on the stock, I'm actually digging in, holding it away from the, the edge and just digging in with that corner. As you can see, I'm working at quite a low heat. I'm just running this out to the side now behind the upset. And that was uh, that was the eyes being put in. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at the rest of the session. We're going to come in and start to make the rough and we're going to start to make the forehead and then we're going to look at the ears. So let's have a look at what we've got here. I would like the forehead to be an outie. Um, there are innies and outies. I want the bear's forehead to be an outie. So I'm going to make two channels and I'm going to start with the inside edge of the tool level with the middle of the snout. So I'm just going to come across here at the back. I'm going to come across here. So they're diverging. And then I'm going to bounce my tool in here and I'm going to get rid of that hard line. Don't go too deep. It's very easy to get carried away and just think, I'm enjoying this. I'm just going to keep working. If you go too deep, it's hard to recover. Just do a nice, gentle 
um, indent on either side and then just create this, like I say, slightly convex and outy for the forehead. So I'm coming in at 90 degrees to the, the stock at this stage, perpendicular to the stock, and I'm just making a trench. Now I'm going to come in perpendicular to that 45 slope as I turn that corner. Here I am, 45 degrees to that slope, and I'm just trying to make a gully. Run that up to the front of the jaw. Don't go past halfway. And then we're just going to do the same on the other side. Just getting rid of the hard lines. And then I'm going to go around the front and I'm going to start to create his goatee. And then it's just cemented all in place. Go back and hit anything you don't like and go from there. All right. We're going to use the same fuller, um, nothing's changed. And all I want you to do, and you can see here on this section on the top left photograph, I've started just above the brow. I put my fuller in there and I'm starting to push back to create the ear. Now I do this in a series of steps. So I do a little bit, I catch up on the other side, I do a little bit more, and then I catch up. Don't go too far. Again, you can see here it is, the same move. I'm just above the brow. Give yourself about a 16th or so, and we're gonna push this back. Now you've got, this is a fishing trip. You've got to hold this tool at such an angle that you are actually gathering material and not skipping off. Um, so I would hold it at 45 degrees and give it a couple of blows. And if you're feeling like you're all going in, sure, drop your hand a little bit. Um, but if you feel like you're skipping off, make sure you lift your hand up and gather a bit more material. We definitely need a lot of material for the ear. Um, the bear's uh, keenest sense is his sense of smell, and he's got a really poor sense of hearing, but he still does have a sense of hearing, and we need those ears to be prominent. As a, a point of um, fact about the uh, the bear's ears, this, this is where I put the bear's ears. And if you were actually to look at a bear, they're actually quite a bit further back than that. But if I put them further back than that on my little model, they look funny. Um, so I keep them um, a little further to the front than they are occurring naturally. Once I've got the um, ears in place, I need to um, start to put a little bit of shape on them. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make them concave. And so I'm going to use this. This is about three eighths of an inch round and about a three eighths of an inch taper. So 45 degrees, if you like, to the stock. And then this is a, um, Daryl calls them a fullering swage. Um, and it's just a, a concavity and a fuller, and that enables me to put a little bit of texture and start to dress the ear. Let's have a look at this. So here I am, and when I'm driving in that uh, cone-shaped tool, I'm actually aiming for the middle of the bar um, behind his uh, neck here. So not on the top. I'm actually, it's, uh, if you were to be uh, a hunter, you would say, this is the brain shot. I want you, that's where I want you to go. I want you to aim into this bar about 45 degrees. Then what I want you to do is I want you to take that following swage, part one, corner it in here, and then we're just going to rotate that around. And again, you can see the chatter marks of the tool 
as I've worked here, I'm trying to create some hair like um, movement as I go along and I start to flatten out the ears. And then here it is, both of them being done together. You can see I've got my outie for the forehead. I could drop my fuller on here and just get rid of that sharp line. Um, but that's the next move. So let's watch it hot. So again, get landmarked. And I'm starting to drive that material back. I like to do it from both sides. First thing I did is get rid of the sharp corner. I don't need that material. Hit it, look at it. Is that where you want to be? If you're happy with it, carry on. You can see that I'm changing my angle as I work, as I'm feeling the material. Do I have enough? Am I feeling like I'm skipping off? That's me dressing the forehead. You can do the forehead before the ears or after the ears, it doesn't matter. And you can see I do a lot of uh, bouncing of the tool. I lift the tool off and I tap the tool and the tool goes in, hits the piece. I do that a lot. Again, taking our brain shot, if you will. Don't go too deep. Putting some shape onto the ears. And again, you can see a lot of this is done at a very low heat, only just above the black. We don't want to, to move too much of the material around. We just want to have a local effect. It's me sculpting the ears. So light rapid blows, I'm trying to create that feathering. Uh, to denote a little bit of sort of texture, hair texture in the ears. So just light rapid blows, spin the tool around and just try and get rid of the hard lines that are on the inside of the ear caused by that cone tool. Next, I want to look at the jaw and we're going to split this front section of the jaw into thirds. I want two thirds on the top, one third on the bottom. Um, and we're going to start to make the lower jaw. We're going to cut this lower jaw again to make a gum line, which is going to be where the teeth are. So um, it doesn't, and it looks like it's not proportionate here, but when we come in to start cutting for the teeth, et cetera, it will become more appropriate. Um, Again, uh, you've got to be careful when you cut. You can see here that my cut actually has a slight arc to it. Now I get that by raising or lowering uh, the curved chisel that I use. And the curved chisel has a chamfer on it. And so I'm going to park either the lower chamfer or the upper chamfer into the material to try and dictate how this cuts. And then if you look at this top uh, right photograph, Again, we're going to split this lower section in half and we're going to start to create the lower gums and the upper teeth. So don't feel like you're taking too much. Split this in thirds, leave two thirds, take the bottom third and we'll go to work. Here's the tool that I'm using. Uh, and I think that is just, it's a normal hot cut chisel. Uh, it's beveled on both sides. 
And uh, I think that gets dropped into something like an inch and a half bottom suede, uh, but it's just uh, a normal uh, chrome molly tool, uh, nothing special. So let's have a look at this done hot. So you can see just from the start that I'm coming in at that two thirds level. In fact, I may be a little high here. So let's see what I do with that. Coming down a little bit, there we go. And then I want you to keep the eye on the angle of the tool. Lift up, push down. And I'm just trying to dictate how that cut goes. So I'm feeling like I'm just a little low, so I might lower my tool, I think. There it is, yeah, there we go, lowering the tool. And now once I've gone in a little bit, I'm going to rotate that tool and cut just on the outside. I don't need the depth of the cut all the way through. I just need to give it the appearance. This bit is key for me. I'm using a low heat and you can see I'm hitting on the sides of the snout and I'm just dragging down the material on the snout. And I'm trying to create that top lip. So you can see the curve of the top is completely different to the curve of the bottom jaw at this stage. So light rapid blows at, a low, at a, uh, a low heat. So I'm not affecting too much of the way of the stock. I'm just trying to change that front of the ledge. Let's have a look at this at another angle. When I look at that, I'm thinking I'm taking too much material and not leaving enough for the snout, but that will change once we start to make the teeth and the gums, etc. Again, look at the angle of the tool, see what I'm doing to create. Um, so I'm lifting up a little bit there just to create a downward slope. Maybe I've gone too far, so I've just dropped it down a little bit. And then I'm just going to rotate the tool and move the cut further back on the edges without moving it further back on the edge of the mouth, with certain the center of the mouth. And now I'm just going to shape up the nose or the nostril. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get, um, we're going to start working on this jaw. There's two things going to happen. I'm going to come in here with my normal hot cut, which has got a slight crown to it, so I can walk it around this. And I'm going to come in with another chisel and I'm going to gather some material and we're going to make a tongue. But first I want you to note, put a lot of effort into cutting around this corner. I'm going to do the same here. So let's say I've gone in a 16th of an inch here on the flat, 16th of an inch on the, the front. I'm going to go in an eighth here. And I want you to see that that is gathering material. And that gathering of material is going to become one of the incisor teeth. So uh, uh, make sure that you do come in at an angle to gather that material for the incisors. Let's have a look at some of the tools we're going to use. This is my normal hot cut chisel. This is a slight crown. It's about a 16th of an inch rise on the center as opposed to the corners. And then this is a side set. So that is not flat ended. That is, let's say it's uh, 80 degrees maybe. Uh, the important thing for me is it is sharp on them, just on the sides. It must be radius on the sides because you're going to try and work along the jaw and you don't want chatter marks the sharp on the bottom is going to give you the definition for the gum line. And again, I want you to make sure that you come in uh, fairly hard on those corners um, and start to set the material to get the incisors. Let's have a look at this done hot, or maybe not so hot, just lukewarm. Here we go. So I'm splitting that jaw material in half or thereabouts. Very good. Okay, we're walking around the edge here now. So 
So can you see how I've uh, rounded that corner? I want a lot of free material there for the incisors. Now I'm going to come in with that side set. You can see it's about 80 degrees. And this is why we have those edges relieved so we can overlap them. We're not going to get chatter marks, but I do want a nice sharp bottom so we can set for the gum line. And I'm just starting to set up what will be the teeth. And you can see the extra material that we gathered at the corner is already starting to become canine. Next, we're going to look at the tongue. Um, we are going to come in with a smaller chisel. And this is the only chisel that, me, that uh, I have that is actually made of something decent. So I make this out of a air coin steel. Um, not that I really need the superiority of the, the alloy, except I want it to be um, resistant to heat. It's going to be parked in this uh, environment for a long period of time, I cut them to small tool and I don't want it to get overly hot um, or to be soft when it gets hot. So I'm using an air quench steel and I think I use H13. So of all my tools, this is the only one that's made of a special alloy. Everything else is just chrome oly 4140. We're going to come in here, here and we're going to again, we're going to cut and then it's a fishing trip. You're going to raise or lower your hand depending on what you see going on in front of you whether you're going to cut the tongue off or whether you're going too deep and you're going to come out through the bottom of the jaw. Um, so you're just going to say uh, up or down, feel for the material. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same tool. And if you can see, if I split this material in the center of the jaw here, you can see I've come from about the center of the material and cut, and I'm going to cut left and right. And I've lifted up enough material here to start making my incisor. I've still left a sort of dome of material here that will be the teeth. You can see lower right there. You've still got that dome, but I want you to start cutting material and placing it over here. And we're going to shape that up to make the incisors. So let's have a look at the tool. Here's my tool. And I think that goes into a 5 8 half round. Um, don't hold me to that. Victoria and John will have uh, the details on that. And that's the only one that is special alloy to me. Everything else is chrome molly. This is probably H13 for me. Let's have a look at this done hot. So you can see I'm fairly steep. The jaw is moving. That's okay. Not a problem. But as you work this, you're going to be upsetting that jaw. I did just quench the tool. Don't rock too far backwards and forwards or otherwise you'll cut into your tongue material. You can lift up as I'm doing there on the edge. But don't rock left or right. You don't need a uh, cut all the way back to the jaw because you're going to close that jaw is one of the last things you do. You just need enough to say that you can see a tongue. And it's more than cutting a tongue. What you're doing is removing the material that's going to get in the way when you're making the teeth. Uh, so yes, it's nice to have the tongue detail, but look at what the material I'm leaving behind and how that's going to make the teeth. And also look at the upsetting that's going on in the base of the jaw there, the lower jaw. You can visibly see it upsetting as I'm working. So I've just got rid of the material that's going to get in my way when I make the teeth. So again, this is what we're after uh, with our bear's head. We want enough of the teeth material to get two incisors, some molars at the back. And so I'm going to start in the center, push the material out, and then I'm going to gather it with another one of our fullering swages. Let's have a look at that. So we're going to cut with this, and then we're going to come over here, and we're going to use the smallest of our fullering swage. We're going to gather the material, 
And then with this sort of chisel that shoots around the corner here, um, we're going to create the, the molars or the rest of the teeth. Um, so let's have a look at that done hot. So I'm starting in the middle. And if you're going to peel this out, peel it out as I'm doing there towards the front, then you can get it. Uh, try not to have the material slip back into the, the jaw of the mouth. It's a lot harder to deal with. So I'm angling my chisel. I'm in the mouth, pushing the teeth out rather than outside of the mouth, pushing the teeth in. See, I'm peeling it off. I'm moving the, my chisel out to the outside of the mouth trying to bring that material out to the outside. There's my fullering swage, and I'm just twisting this backwards and forwards and treating it like a double-sided fuller, if you will. And I'm just trying to raise that material, shape my tooth as best I can. And I'm doing this at a lowish heat, uh, be aware of blue brittle. Don't work down into the black and give that a whack because you'll end up with uh, needing a filling. Um, so let's just take that down as low as you can into the heats, gently tapping that, working around the tooth. I don't mind that the jaw is open. We'll close that with our 5 16th fuller later on. You can see I'm just rocking the material around. It's another look at the same move. Nice light rapid blows, rocking the fuller backwards and forwards. going to isolate that material and I'm working back and I'm creating the, the molars, if you will. So you can see where that uh, chisel that goes around the corner comes in useful. I can get into the jaw and make my incisions. And then I'm going to come around the side and just take those incisions down to the gum line. You can see that the glove is getting a little toasty there. Um, I do advocate that you have a couple of gloves standing by. So when it does get hot, you can just shake it off. It's a welding glove, so it should come off quite quickly uh, and then put on a second glove. And if you're working during the summer um, and you're getting a little sweaty, change the glove because those steam burns can get quite nasty. So at this stage, we're going to come in and we want to close the jaw, close the tongue, and I'm going to park our 5 16 fuller here on his beard. And I'm just going to work from both sides so I don't uh, twist the jaws. And I'm just going to start to close the mouth. So let's have a look at that done hot. You can see it's starting to twist, so we'll work from both sides. As I lift up on this jaw, I want you to see now that it is uh, receded past the, the nose or the snout. Let's have a look at this. So just keep your eye on the snout and the jaw relationship. And you can see that this jaw is definitely behind the snout. A bear has a great sense of smell. It's its strongest sense. And as such, the nose dominates the whole snout area. And we need to make sure we give it uh, due prudence. So we are going to create the nostrils and we're also going to create this whole nose area. All right, let's have a look at the uh, tools we're going to use for the nose. 
I'm going to use the same tool as I use for the tongue. I've got a smaller one here. Uh, and I want to say that quarter inch maybe that that's been dropped into. And you can see it's a very steep taper. It's quite, quite a, a strong end. And then we're going to come back and we're going to use that side set as we gather some of the material and start to uh, push that material in to make the natural. Let's have a look at this done hot. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go all around the nose and I'm just going to isolate the nose. Not worried about the nostrils at this stage. Take your time. And I just want to make a little gully that I can come in after with my side set and start to push some of the nose material away from the snout, if you will, or the snout away from the nose material. Again, it's important to me that this side set have soft edges so that you can link the blows together. You're not creating chatter marks, but the, the bottom edge, the, the edge that's resting on the actual nose now is reasonably sharp. And I'm just trying to push the snout away from what will be the nose. Let's have a look at another view of the same thing. I'm definitely working down into the black heats here. I just want to have a very local effect. I don't want to push material into the snout. I just want to move that little bit of material right there by the nose. And I want to make the nose the most prominent feature. Um, Daryl Nelson, I would call an artist Smith. I'm not really an artist, I'm a technician. I know that a bear has two ears, two eyes and one nose, you know, and I try and keep it to that. Um, what I'm trying to do is make sure they go in the right place. Now I'm using my much smaller tool, my quarter inch. I'm coming in about halfway up the nose and I'm just dropping that in just to lift it up and make the nostrils. Again, do a little bit, catch up, do a little bit more if you want to catch up. Don't try and do it all from one side. And then I don't know what the call this but the the bear does have a bit of a split lip so put a little mark uh, and again i would chase that with your side set just make a little groove and then push the material away either side with the side set just to create a little v So let's have a look at, um, we're going to finish off now with the eyes and the brow. And a lot of the expression comes from that brow line. And you can see I've got two little bears here. One is happy-go-lucky. This is sort of Winnie the Pooh. And this one is definitely somebody you don't want to meet on a dark alley. Um, and that really comes down to this brow line. I'm going to use uh, three tools. I'm going to, I've got my fuller just to sort of um, re-establish uh, the eye socket, if you will. I have got a ball. This is a bob punch, and that bob punch is the same size as the, the fuller. And I use this bob punch to make this uh, eye socket tool or the eye tool. 
Um, so this bob punch is important to me. One, it makes this tool, and two, it helps me crisp up the eye socket closest to the snout so that I can drop this eye tool in place. Let's have a look at that. So I'm coming in now with the bob punch, and all I'm going to do is clean up this transition area right here at the side of the snout. This is my eye tool. And you'll notice I'm swinging this around. I'm not just driving it in deep. I'm actually scribing an arc with this thing. I'm trying to gather material. Mm. Now I've got a, a round eye here. If you go to more of the lynx, you know, or a wolf, you might change the shape of the eye, uh, but the bear is definitely round. And at this stage, he looks like he's just been goosed. Um, so I've got my fuller, I'm dropping it on his cheek line, just trying to soften those cheeks a little bit. It's another view of the same moves. So I've just created, uh, just cleaned it up. Now I'm going to come in with my eye. Notice I swing a nice arc of this eye. I'm just trying to gather the material, not drive it in too deep. I'm going to get rid of the cheeks. Sorry about this. The camera and I are both fighting for the same view. Working down into the black heat, so I'm just trying to dress his cheeks a little bit. Not just the top, but anything on there. Now, here we go. Now we're going to give it some attitude. So again, you can see I'm slightly above the brow. And I'm just trying to chase that down a little bit. And then I'm going to angle or change the angle of my tool. And I'm going to bring it down the front and give him a little bit of attitude. So at this stage, I'm just giving an eyebrow. Same on the other side. And then this guy looks like he's a little bit sleepy at this stage, um, but I think we're gonna change that in a moment. Get rid of any hard lines that you see anywhere on the bear's head. And if I were to do anything now, I would come in here at the front and just drop my fuller down the front. There we go. Just to give him a little bit more attitude there.
And I think that's the one and only time I give it a brush, Russ. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I didn't know if you did it off camera before. Oh, not at all. Um, <laughs> it's, again, it's that scaling action. Uh, there's enough work going on that it's going to knock the big scale off. And the scaling action to me is just texture. These are uh, a series of heads. The uh, the links here and the wolf are very much Darren Nelson's. Um, he does these and they use very much the same tooling. You notice he doesn't cut for the jaw. These are both out of inch and a half square. These are my sort of my following um, Daryl. The only difference with the wolf is that the ears are cut from behind after you've dropped your fuller in to give them that sort of concave shape. Then you're going to cut from behind to lift the ears. Uh, uh, all of these, it all hinges with the pre-shape. You're just going to come in and get the pre-shape first by drawing the, the correct length of taper uh, go from there. As a side note, if you're involved with the Abana National Curriculum, um, and there are three levels to the National Curriculum, level one, two, and three, would you believe? Um, in level three, you're going to start making some um, bottom swages for welded collars and the same skills and almost the same tooling are going to be used whether you're making this uh, bottom tooling for a welded collar or you're making the the bear's head it really is the same skills so if you can make one you can make the other uh, daryl has four one hour dvds covering the bear's head and other animal heads they're available from things like um artists and ideas etc so if you get into this idea of forging or this method of forging you can certainly get some uh, resources to help you along thank you very much for participating in this abana event